Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children, weirdos, and watch nuts of all ages, thank you so much for being with me. This is a live broadcast, and we are expecting Clyde, the rancher Anderson, to join us at any moment. I have, in fact, texted him, uh, but I'm waiting for him to appear at any moment. Gentlemen, in the comments, do me a favor and tell me if you can hear me, because I'm not entirely sure that any of this is working. Then I will greet the punters in the peanut gallery. Thank you so much for joining me. Just tell me, can you hear me? All good. Thank you, Blue Shirt Buddha. We've got Blue Shirt Buddha, Thomas Burnett, Booser, Mark Paris, Dave Coffey, and a bunch of other reprobates and strange people that have nothing better to do on a Sunday evening. Shouldn't you people be at uh, evening mass? Isn't that where you should be? Okay. Uh, sooner or later, oh, Clyde is texting me. Let me see what he's saying. You know, I'm getting those three little dots. You know what a really good trick is uh, for those of you who are on iPhone is if you go into the GIF section, you can look up the GIF of three little dots that means you're typing, and you can just send that to your buddy, and, <laughs> and it'll go forever. Very annoying. Clyde just stopped typing. I'm, uh, let me yell at him now. I mean, it's not. Oh, here he is. <laughs> Clyde's with us. Hey, Clyde the Wrangler. Doing? Why can't I hear you? Can you hear me? Now I hear you. Well, I can, but your mouth is out of sync with your with your microphone. What's up with that? How about now? Yeah, like mother, so, can you hear me? Yeah, but don't block your face so I can see your lips move. Mother, can you hear me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Now you're good. You are good. Okay. Well, uh, so Clyde and I were chit-chatting in the last week or so, and uh, one of the things that has occurred to us, uh, or, you know, is this concept of Rolex fatigue. Now, apparently you have Archie fatigue today. Yes. Mm. But um, I, I kind of want to address the topic because, <coughs> excuse me, something is going on with me, guys. Something, and I, I don't know if it's good or if it's bad, but there's definitively something happening with me. And uh, before we move any further into the topic, I think we should get the quick fist watch check out of the way. And Clive, would you like to go first? Sure. What is it, Clivey? It's the Breitling 806 1959 reissue. Whoa. Now, that is a brand new addition to your collection. Yes. And that, that's the watch that the pontiff has been telling you to buy it and make yourself happy. I'm still keeping it. I'm still keeping it. <laughs> Even though you yeah, received advice. I from Archie to the contrary. Mm. That is a very nice watch. That's a 41 millimeter. You've put it on a combat sub strap of some kind. No, not yet. I'm, I'm waiting for it to come in. Aaron. So Aaron is making up for me. He, he, yeah. Those are specially made straps. Mm. I see. Clyde, you might want to like lower your camera. There's like way too much space over the top of your head. I don't know if that's adjustable. And um, I don't oh, know. Yeah. If it, yeah. Yeah. We want to see your nipples. There we go. Much better. <laughs> yeah, I, I, the is, I'm on like a 27 inch, like a 27 inch monitor. So it's like the mm. camera is way up there. I and also, see. and it's adjustable. Now, of course, I can do it all the way up, but. Yeah, no, that's bad. We want to see nipples. Guys, tell me in the comments, if is it just me or is Clyde's laggy? I don't know, Clyde. Sounds like you got well, a I've, I've been trying to fuck with my internet, though. It was, it's was it been troubling me the last couple of days. Let me see if I could... Now he's gone. Well, no, I'm not gone. <laughs> okay. But, we're, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, as we're experiencing some technical difficulties... But while the rancher is trying to figure out his internet connection, I mean, I would rather see you than not, Clyde. He so said, "Don't, don't let me, don't let me make you completely paranoid." But uh, Clyde is wearing the new 1959. Uh, oh no, you changed watches. What happened? What are you wearing now? I'm suffering from advanced onset, Mark Goldberg. <laughs> well, let me get the quick fist watch check out of the way, and then we have to talk about the onset of this syndrome because something is happening with me, and I don't know if it's just me. Oh, it looks like an explorer. Yes. Rolex, Rolex, Rolex. OP3611600, blue explorer dial. 
Now, is that the is that the watch which famously did less than nothing for them? No, no, no. That was actually <laughs> that was an Explorer thirty six. Uh, this one is an OP thirty six, modern yeah. one. But it was that size of yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, I, I don't know what I'm wearing in terms of size, but it is a G Shock. It is a uh, forty something, forty a forty a lot. Um, I've got it kind of upside down. I, I don't really want to do the the pontiff, you know, palsy victim. So I think I'll take it off to show it to the punchers. And honestly, I'm afraid I'm going to take a lot of crap from uh, from the from the. I'm a little afraid to read the comments. I'm sure there's going How's to be. How's this? Is this is this enough headroom now or not? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now you look good. Yeah. I wouldn't say that, but at least I'm in frame. No, I I think you look great. So, um, guys, here here. Let me start out by saying, I think many of us are in the same boat. Um, Jeff McMahon, if you don't know his channel, you should. He's he's a he's a great watch YouTuber and a great watch guru. Jeff McMahon calls himself a watch obsessive. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I think that that's definitely what's wrong with me. We, and, and really, Jeff was the reason why I, I started out my intro saying, is it a is it an, a hobby or is it an illness? Because I definitely think it's both. You know, um, w West, WV David R says Archie will be so ashamed of Mark. But remember, <laughs> Archie bought a, a Casio Royale for twenty five dollars off of eBay because I told him to, and now he's wearing it like constantly. So actually, I, I'm not so. I think he's ashamed of himself as much as me. But here's my problem, guys. I'm an I'm an obsessive, and whatever I put my mind to, I focus on like too much. Uh, Clyde. You've, you've been that way maybe a little bit with the MR2, wouldn't you say? Like just so zoned in on a project that you can't get your mind off of it. Pretty much, yes. But um, but on the other hand, it's it, the pay, I finally got the payoff. I've, I've gotten it back. I've been driving it all weekend. Nary a problem. Yeah, not, even, a not even a drip of oil underneath it. Not a single light. Now you're you're talking about your car, not your last date or girlfriend. That's correct. Okay, well that's good because we we don't want drips under the car or the lady friends. So, um, but you've. I'm been... talking about Vincenier. I've been in the quite a lot this week. Yeah, I'm not too sure about the uh, the dripping under gin. Uh, send him a link if you get the. No, chance. no, 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 Vincenier. Oh, same. Yeah, it's a, not the same. You know, it's a yellow car, so I get confused. But the the fact of the matter is, is that we get so focused, like if. If I were to tell you um, how many parts the rancher has replaced on the MR2 over the course of the last six months, you know, like it's, it's basically like uh, your car, Clyde, is a little bit like the body of uh, Vladimir Lenin on display in Moscow. It's like 23% of the real Lenin is still there and everything else is replacement parts. Or any one of Dr. BBW's watches. Well, or any of Dr. BBW's patients, <laughs> you know, very sure. similar situation. Anyway, the point of that I'm trying to say is we get Clyde, me, and probably you guys too. You could tell us about this in the comments. Um, probably all of us, this is why we're gathered around the concept of watches. I, I don't know why watches attracts obsessive people, o OCD people so much, but, but it does. And I have put so much energy into watches that um, I think I have just exhausted myself. Um, I made two videos a week, maybe even three videos a week for month after month after month, just pumped and dumped the vids. Um, I have a collection of 10 Rolexes. And I find that lately in, in the course of the last month, I can't even, I don't even really want to wear any of them. And I, and all I want to wear is like cheap battery operated watches. You know, look, I've got I've got two of them. This is uh, this is this is the kind of stuff that I want to wear lately. Even though I own. Here's why though. I have your roots. Before you doing like just Rolex, kind of a fresh brightlings, weren't you? Guys, guys. Tell me in the comments if you can hear the rancher because Clyde, you're coming across very herky jerky, breaky, breaky. I, I think you better go out and come back in. A problem. I, I can't even make out what you're saying, and your picture is frozen. Fuck me. <laughs> well, I, I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, um, you know, I saw a couple of comments. Clyde, I think you better try getting in and out. Um, there's a couple of comments here that I think do um, reflect a little bit about what I'm going through right now. And um, uh, Thomas Murphy says, too much of a good thing takes the special feeling away with anything in life. Same with Rolex. They don't feel special anymore. It could be that. Um, Clyde, I should boot you out of here. I don't know how to do that, but like you should go and then come back in because you're... It might take a couple minutes. Okay. Yeah, no worries. Um, you know, Thomas Murphy, they say behind every beautiful woman is, is, a, is a guy who's tired of, you know, banging her. Um, so it could be that, but I also think it has to do with how much energy, uh, watch obsessive people put into the watches. Which one should I wear? Worrying about rotation, trying to set those watches, um, daily trying to update them, worrying how much power is in the power reserve is it running two seconds fast <clears throat> is it running two seconds slow you know and i find with these guys here i don't have to worry about is it accurate is it running did i wind it um i don't have to worry about anything other than the uh, the power reserve so of course you know my head does go to the battery and these the, the watches that i like are solar so uh, i do like leave them in the sun and i don't feel easy uh until the um until the battery is full. Um, but I, I do think that we put like a little too much energy in it. Uh, Dave Coffey says, do we want a Daytona because we really want it or because we can't get it? And um, boy, is that the question? That is really the question. I, I, I bought my first Daytona, which I sold famously as, and stupidly, by the way, because I sold it for half the price of what they are going for right now. But um, I bought it uh, because I thought I should have one, because I thought my collection needed one, because I thought I would get better respect from watch collectors. And then I got it, and I didn't like it. Um, but I think I'm ready for another one. I think I'm ready for it now. I don't think I don't think my tastes were as sophisticated or sophisticated enough then, and I didn't. I don't think I appreciated it fully. And I got into much much bigger watches, bigger Rolexes, but. If I do wear a Rolex now, uh, the one that I'm wearing lately is the um, the Yachtmaster 2, which although it's a 40 millimeter, it's not a super case. So it wears more like a 39. And that's the one I'm liking, you know, I think most of all lately. Um, and, uh, well, that answers the question. Uh, Dave Coffey asked, Mark, how much have you worn the Yachtmaster since you bought it? Well, you know, naturally, it's like any time you get a new watch, you live in it for a week. I mean, I, I, you know, I slept in it. I bathed in it. <laughs> you know, I took a shower in, in that Yachtmaster. And now I, I only pull it out if I'm going to go out somewhere and I want to feel a little fancy. But I'm having Rolex fatigue, guys. So um, I just, and it's not just Rolex fatigue. I think it's expensive watch fatigue. I just put so much energy out there that I, I, I'm exhausted from it. Now, um, a lot of you guys know, you'll see uh, Let Dogs Be Dogs behind me right there. This, uh, I'm the co-author of that book. And um, a lot of you, you know, know that I, that I co-authored that book. And I've spoken about the fact that I'm writing a new book, um, which will be out next year, late next year. And, um, but I just finished it. <laughs> okay. If you're on my Instagram, which by the way is my Instagram is Chicago underscore uh, dog trainer. I think, what is it? Hold on. You know, I don't want to steer you wrong. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. I'm going to tell you what is my Instagram. Oh God. How do I even know here? Um, okay. It's Chicago underscore dog underscore trainer. Okay, so Chicago dog trainer separated by underscores. Anyway, um, you know, I put I posted a picture of me drinking a tequila. You know, at the moment that I finished the last line of the last chapter, um, Rolex, 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 Bud to Stud. Thank you for the two dollars. Like Popeyes sandwiches, we want hard to get. Oh yeah, yeah. I think it's exactly like that. Um, you know, everybody's going crazy for those Popeyes sandwiches because there's a shortage of them. I mean. Is that on purpose? Seems like a pretty smart strategy if it's on purpose. Rolex, Rolex, Rolex Booser. Maybe Crappy is better off with no watches. Well, he's probably stuck in a loop too. His excess energy and focus is going into picking one. 
which by the way, I think is pretty much a big scam. He's just going to wait until we pay for it. By the way, I donated $25 to the crappy watch fund. Never got as much as a thank you. I've just gotten a lot of criticism on his channel anyway, but I wish him well. I do. He's pretty entertaining. He's fun to watch. Um, but you know, like here's my point. I've been writing the, uh, the new book, the one that'll come out next year. I've been working on that book since July. Yeah. I think I've been writing heavily since July. So July, August, September, October, and then half of November. It's not that long a period of time, right? It's only four and a half months. And I wrote a whole friggin' book <laughs> during that period of time. Oh my God. Um, well, you know, of course my co-author is also heavily involved, so it's definitely a collaboration, but, um, you know, based on our discussions, our notes and our, you know, dovetailed concepts, I wrote out about 60,000 semi-polished words during that period of time. So what I can tell you is this computer right here, um, you know, I was sitting at it whenever I had a spare moment and, uh, dreaming about word count, going to sleep, thinking about a chapter, waking up, thinking about the next one. I just, I had no energy left for watches and I had no energy left for watch videos. So I'm sure that you've noticed, I haven't posted a whole lot of videos lately. You know, in the last couple months, there hasn't been a lot. Uh, I've done the occasional live stream and, uh, I've gotten my fix of the camaraderie from the, uh, the Cardinals and you guys uh, by going on Archie's live streams and Clyde once in a while jazzes me into doing a live stream of my own. Bless his heart. He loves doing them. He just doesn't love doing them on his channels, uh, you know, so much, but um, I had so much energy into all those videos uh, all summer long. And then the book just took my entire brain and I, I put so much energy into the book. Um, he's trying to get back in. There we go. Clyde, can you hear me? Fine. Well, it's more of the same nonsense, by the way. Fuck. Yeah, you know, it's this Mac being on Mojave. <laughs> okay, well, if you if you're trying to hear the pontiff, you may not. He's a little pixelated. Uh the I'm not the pont Hey, I'm not I'm not the pontiff. I corrected myself. Okay. I don't know, Clyde. Uh Guys, would you tell me, is it just me or... or, or just no, Clyde? no, it's, it's this. I'm going to... Uh, yeah. Text me, Clyde, because I can't understand you. I, 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 <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> I got to kick him out. I'm sorry, Clyde. I'm going to miss you, but I had to kick him out. He just... I put him back in the back in the office. <laughs> He's in the back room. I'll, I'll see if I can bring him out in a couple minutes, maybe. Anyway, I just exhausted myself with too many watch videos, too much purchasing of watches. Um, and then I wrote the book and, um, and I'm just exhausted. Now, mind you, I still like watches. Um, Rolex, 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 Andy man, $5. This is a really good question. Did you feel self-conscious wearing a fancy watch around the monks of new skeet? Where'd it go? Hold on. Uh, wearing a fancy watch around the monks of new skeet. Did you talk watches the, uh, with them, what do they wear? It, this is a good, good set of questions. So let me answer them now, and then we'll come back to my fatigue. Um, actually, I'm going to New Skeet tomorrow uh, to work with my co-author and the monks on the new book. Um, we, we've, we did, like, professional photographer took a couple thousand pictures of us, and we have to pick photographs for the book. We need about 100 pictures. So we got to go through 2,000 pictures to find the right 100. And that sounds like, oh, pick a pretty one. But it's not like that. You got to pick the one that shows exactly what you're trying to illustrate in the text. So it's it's kind of going to be tedious and complex. But anyway, so I'm going there. And this came in literally maybe an hour ago. So I'm going to bring this. And I'm going to bring only this. Do the, the monks are um, the monks, all of them individually have taken the vow of poverty, right? So although they own a few things, they own very little personally, pretty much everything big, like a car, um, a television, that kind of stuff is bought by the community and they coordinate, you know, one with the other, you know, what, what they're going to buy. And, and they, um, you know, they make agreements. There's a committee of monks and they determine you know, what they're going to buy. Lizzie, are you back? Clyde, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. All right. Well, welcome back. You, you still look funny. 
and your mouth is open and you're frozen. Okay. So anyway, um, <laughs> they've all taken the vow of poverty on the one hand. On the other hand, you know, they know the rest of us have not. Um, and so, yeah, I've talked watches to them. And I, it's the point where, where some of the monks will come up to me and go, they'll just grab my wrist. What are you wearing today? <laughs> you know, did you bring a Rolex? And they're almost disappointed when I didn't. Um, so, you know, they're aware of my weird habits and they're tolerant and amused by me. Meantime, what do they wear? Well, I would say most of them either don't wear a watch at all or they wear something very, very cheap. Now, my friend, Brother Christopher, who's my co-author, you know, he's the, he's the other one on the book there. Um, Brother Christopher, he wore, he, he didn't have a watch at all. Now, mind you, remember bells go off at the monastery, uh, you know, every so often. So they can kind of closely track their day. And, you know, there's clocks here and there, you know, inside the monastery. But, you know, most of them don't walk around with a watch. Brother Christopher had a very cheap quartz watch and he only had it you know, somebody gave it to him. One of the other monks gave him a quartz watch, but the battery ran out like a month after he got it. And it happened while I was there and I caught him trying to wind it. It was the cutest thing. He had this dead quartz watch and he was trying to wind it. <laughs> and I was like, oh, brother Christopher. And it was his birthday, you know, on top of it. So what I did was uh, I ordered a watch and I brought it to him the time of, you know, so the last time I was up there, I um, I brought him a watch and what I, what did I get him? Um, you know, he's a dog trainer also. So I wanted to get him something with a movable bezel. I wanted it to be automatic. So I got him an Orient diver. I think it was an Orient Mako USA, which I think cost a whopping 150 bucks. And it, he loved it. He still has it. He, he, it, he went on pilgrimage to Italy for a while and he took it with him. Hi, Clydesy. Can you hear me now? I can. You're moving funny, but at least I can hear you. Can you see me move? Well, I could see you move, but you're herky jerky. You know, you're freezy peasy. Clyde, count to ten. Here you count to ten. One, two. Yeah, no, he's got to go. Okay, so uh, anyway, I, I bought him the Mako USA, and uh, he loves it. It's day date. It's self winding. Has a turnable bezel. He could tie him. You know. Mind you, I was a little worried that he would uh, forget to screw the crown down and go into the water or shower or, you know, um, not know how to change the day or the date. But I think he figured it out. <laughs> so I did teach him. He's an intelligent man. You know, they just don't deal a whole lot, the monks, with, you know, technological, you know, things. So. And uh, actually, YVR Pete brings up a good point. Andy, man, Mark Goldberg, if the Dalai Lama can wear Rolexes, we should not feel selfish or guilty. But I understand the point. That is a, you know, it is, it is, it's all, it's all over Google. If you Google Dalai Lama Rolex collection, apparently he has a few of them. And uh, uh, who could blame him? <laughs> you know, uh, the, the 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 Dalai Lama does have a few. Uh, does have a few Rolex. Rich Buddy says, if I was a monk, I would wander naked with one grand complication pocket watch because I got no pockets. Well, no, the monks wa the monks wander around in robes, which they call habits. So it is kind of funny if you walk up to one of the monks and say, hey, brother, got any dirty habits? You know, that's a little bit of monastery humor for you there. Gilbert Rios, hey, Mark, most guys can't afford Rolex. Patek, Vacheron Constantin, and El de Mal Piguet. They want to talk about good timepieces that they can afford to purchase. And I agree with you, Gilbert. I think that's very true, which is why when you look at channels like um, TGV, who talks about, you know, low-end watches or much, much, you know, less expensive watches, th those channels tend to have more subscribers. You're going to get more views if you talk about Seiko um, and G-Shock, you know, uh, the, you're going to get more views. Now, that being said, Rolex is very, very aspirational for tons of people who want to watch videos about them, even though they don't buy them. But I agree. Um, I think that uh, the, the in fact, I, I actually distinguish personally between Rolex, Patek, Vacheron, Constantin, and Aldi Mal Piguet. The reason that I prefer Rolex to any of those other three, even though the other three are, in fact, the Holy Trinity, the reason that I prefer uh, Rolex, even though the horology is not as hot, the reason that I prefer it, though, is that it holds its value. So I feel like 
once I've tied up a stupid amount of money in Rolex, if I decide, you know what, fuck it, I want to get out of this game, I can, I can just sell them all, right? And I will recuperate all or some of, or most of my money, maybe, maybe a little extra, depending on what I have and how long I've held it. And um, so I feel like I will keep having my five thousand dollars. Yeah, it's a little bit how I feel. So for me, um, Rolex has just the right prestige. It has the right quality. It's super robust. I really, really want to wear a watch that I can go into the water with, that I can bang around a little bit. I, I, I don't want to have to treat it like a piece of, uh, you know, precious, you know, flame that I have to shield from the wind. And I think with any, like with a Patek, you know, you don't want to go. You don't want to mow the lawn wearing a Patek. And I don't want to own anything that I can't, you know, cut the grass, use my chainsaw, take a shower. I don't want to own anything that, uh, you know, that, uh, that I can't do that in. So I just really want robust things. Now, Tree Dillinger also says that um, certain channels are disingenuous when it comes to those brands. And I'm sure that's true. There are people spooking, you know, maybe less expensive watches who are secretly wearing more expensive watches. But look, um, as a as a content creator on YouTube, I, I feel lucky in the sense that I don't care about the money. Well, first, I mean that sounds bad. Like if you if you have sent me money, trust me, I ter- I appreciate it very much. But what I'm trying to say is I'm not trying to replace my income with YouTube, but there are people who are doing that and they have to study strategy and and make YouTube videos that will get them views and will get them subscribers. I do want views. I do want subscribers. But uh, yeah, I love my career and uh, I'm not trying to get out of this job into something else. So please do your best to prevent me from going full time on YouTube. Because if I go full time on YouTube, it means the fit has hit the shan and I'm in trouble. Um, I really much prefer training dogs and writing books, you know. And uh, by the way, if any of you have a dog problem anywhere in the world, I do telephone consultations. So you could email me at markgoldberg8 at gmail.com. We could talk about that. Okay. So, Booster, Mark, I thought it was because you suffered childhood trauma from all your watches getting water damaged. And that is why you now favor dive watches. You know, they all did get water damage. That's true. Um, I, I think, though... Booster, the reason I want really robust watches is because I'm kind of hard on my stuff, you know? Do you know people who are, like, meticulous and they take really good care of their stuff? And then there are other people who just hard on their things. Like, I don't feel good about it. If I get a new car, even a new used car, I can't feel good about it until a shopping cart has dinged it, you know, and then it's over with, you know? Uh, uh, Like, I just know anything I own is going to get banged up. So... I feel that um, I want to wear watches that I that are robust because I, I I'm pretty sure I would break anything else. So that's why I want it to be waterproof and robust. And Rolex really fills the bill there. Let's see. Blue shirt says, "Buy what you love and love what you buy." That's absolutely true. But if you buy too many, know that you bought something that you can get out of without losing a fortune. That's, that to me is a really big deal. Um, because I, I, um, I, I own t- more watches than is reasonable. I don't know how many, I, let's call it 15. I mean, 15 to 20, somewhere in there. And that's like a stupid amount of watches. Why, why do I got to own that many watches? Excuse me, cold coffee. Parched. It's like kind of a stupid number of watches. Um, and the only way that mentally it works for me to have that much money tied up in them is to say, yeah, hey, you know, if I want to convert them back to capital, I can do that. <laughs> Yankee Doodle says, I can't take watch advice from someone who traded a Porsche for a Ford. Fuck me dead. Well, that would be me. Um, I'm very happy with my, with my Ford though. I got a Ford Exploder and look guys, I needed to be able to haul dogs to um, load my car full of crates. Um, I, I, I go to the local farm quite near where I am and I buy bales of straw, which I use for bedding or when we get mud here, you know, to create, to dry up the mud, you know, and I, I did all that in a Porsche, but it doesn't feel good. Uh, you're the best Mark. Know me, me like the PT shows. I don't know what that means, but thank you, Peter. I think you're trying to be nice. Um, 
Have you ever, Booster, have you ever branched into training other kinds of animals like monkeys, snakes, lions, or bears? No, no. I mean, I had I had a horse for a while, um, but my horse was kind of a jerk and I would have needed a trainer if I wasn't selling him. So um, no, I'm, I'm a specialist in one animal only and that is the dog. It took me an entire lifetime, you know, to learn, like a whole lifetime. I, I was uh, doing this since I'm a child. So it took me an entire lifetime to get good at it. And, um, uh, about as it's about all I can do to to deal with uh, to deal with dogs. So I'm not interested in other animals. It's, I, I'm a specialist. Tree Dillinger says, "Well, Yankee Doodle says Logan, I love my cue. I guess Logan has a cue and he loves it." And uh, Tree Dillinger says that uh, he has one and it sits in a drawer. I actually uh, am occasionally wearing my cue. It's not near me. It's upstairs. Clyde, you you got a cue? Didn't you get one? Clyde now frozen with his oh, mouth. Up, so come on. <laughs> come on, Clyde. I'll give you a minute to figure it out. Do you, Clyde, do you have a Q? A Timex Q? A Q Timex? I'm a boot him again. Okay, so um, I do, I, I occasionally wear the, the Q Timex. I, I kind of like it, especially now that I'm um, I'm into you know how to put it uh, battery operated shitters like i like these watches right now they are my favorites and so uh, i do and i i also like the day-to-day -day complication so i'm wearing my cue from time to time uh my daughter wants to know wv david r wants to know if foxes can be good pets the answer is i have no idea um but you know i hear they can be domesticated but i think you'd need one that was like born in captivity i i don't know i'm a dog guy what do i know blue shirt buddha is Caesar Milan a nice guy? Is he a good dog trainer? He's a, um, I don't think he would really say he was a dog trainer. I, I think what he would say is that he rehabilitates dogs. So he doesn't really teach him, get off the couch, come back when I call you, um, down and wait and stay, uh, house manners. I mean, that's kind of stuff that, that, that I do. I think that what, um, what Caesar puts his time into is like saving dogs who are attacking other dogs or people who are fighting, who are chasing livestock. I mean, he deals with some very, very serious aggression cases. And what I could tell you is he's really good at it. I've worked, I've watched him work in person and he's really, really good at it. But I think that if you have like, um, you know, Bernice mountain dog and you want it to learn to come when called and quit jumping on grandma, it's like not, you don't want his style of training. You want mine. Um, you know, if you have a Rottweiler who's maybe going to kill somebody, you probably want, you probably want him. Is that the rancher? The rancher says he thinks he's got it. So we're going to let him back in. <laughs> I don't, oh, I don't <laughs> he texted me that he's got it, but let me text him back. Hold on. I'm going to text him back. Oh yeah. You don't got it. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> okay. You know what? I'm having a lot of fun with him. With you know, the rancher is frustrated right now. And is there really is there anything more fun than a frustrated rancher? Especially because he's been begging me to do a stream like this for like months. Like every day is like, let's do a stream. Let's do a stream. Let's do a stream. And here we are doing the stream, and you know, and he's fucked up. Uh, so I like I do like Caesar Milan. I don't know him well, but I do know him, and I, and in his area, he's phenomenal. He's better than anybody, better than anybody. Yankee Doodle, the Q pulls the hair out of my wrist. You know, um, the the I I got a little bit of hair on the wrist, but um, for whatever reason, that bracelet and I get along. I'm not going to say I've never felt a, a a pull. I have, but I think the two hairs that were going to get in the way of that. Uh, of that wristband are gone. Um, you know who really needs to avoid a Q Timex is Kenny Nguyen from Jewelers on Time because he has exactly three wrist hairs. I've always told him he should name them, you, you know, like uh, Larry, Curly, and Mo. <laughs> you know, can you imagine if the three most famous wrist hairs in horology got accidentally pulled out by a, by a Q Timex? That would be hysterical. Uh, let's see. Silly boy says it's his own fault, meaning the rancher, he has to get good internet and decent hardware. <laughs> you know, the rancher rebuilds Max for fun and pleasure. I, I don't really understand why, but he is constantly buying used Macintoshes and rebuilding them. Um, and he lives in, um, 
Oklahoma. So I think their internet is powered by hamsters or or donkeys. Uh, Jaime Y, or is that Jaime Y, says, Mark, squirt Clivers with a water bottle next time he tries to join. <laughs> Jaime, of course, uh, talking about a tried and true method of punishing dogs for jumping, you know, squirt them in the face with a water pistol or something. Uh, so anyway, guys, um, oh, Booster, is it safe to buy Omega Buckles on eBay? Yeah, I, yeah, I, I would think so. Why do you want an Omega Buckle? Buckle? You mean like for a, like, you know, like, like a Tang buckle? I, I would think so. I mean, you know, eBay is, I, I do buy now and again from eBay. Um, if you buy anything really expensive, you want to run, get it authenticated. But when you buy through eBay and pay through PayPal, if there's any dispute, you're going to win if you are the uh, buyer and you are likely going to lose if you are the seller. So I feel very good about buying on eBay and I feel a little sketched out about selling on eBay, you know. Yankee Doodle, which do you think Archie likes more, horology or horology? <laughs> I think they are in equal measure, you know. I think they are in equal measure. Uh, Booster has a bracelet but no clasp. Yeah, I would think that you could get it on eBay. Yes, I do think that. Um, but you know what? You want to get it from a seller who has a lot of feedback, who's been around a while and hopefully deals in watches so that you don't get a fake. But, you know, it's just a clasp. I don't I don't think anybody's going to be the, selling fake clasps, so brand 700 says i am so rolex fatigued that i started looking at pieces that talk to me versus return on investment omega planet ocean black ceramic case 39 millimeter yeah i i hear you and that's why i started wearing two three hundred dollar watches lately uh for the same reason you, you know um uh whatever my shepherd is scratching herself way too much so um you know whatever it is that you um that you're into, I think you should, you know, indulge yourself. Um, but uh, I, I'm glad I didn't get crazy into like AP or Patek because then they would be sitting in the safe like the Rolexes are, but maybe I would have a much harder time selling them if I decide I got to get out of this game, you know. I like watches. Mark, how about selling a few sports pieces and getting a platinum day date? I think that would suit you. Hmm. Hmm. So, first of all, the Platinum Day-Date is cool, really cool. Um, I really like that one with the blue, light blue checkerboard-looking dial. Really beautiful. But, oh, my God, it's so much money. What are those, like $80,000, I think, something like that. And also, the all of the Platinum Day-Dates have a smooth bezel. And I really like the fluted bezels on the um on the gold ones so no the bezel ruins it you know that was that was the same reason that hisham did not get the platinum day date because he wanted the fluted bezel um so mm. but you know i do wonder i do think one of these days maybe i should get a patek and um i'm not a patek excuse me well, look, I'm on the wait list right now for a Hulk. So I'm sure I will be very happy and wear Rolex again when I get the Hulk. I'm not buying it to flip it. I'm buying it to own it and hold it. Um, and then maybe eventually a Daytona. But I don't own anything gold or precious metal. So maybe a, a Daytona in gold. Mm. I think I would rather have a Daytona in gold than a day date in platinum. you got to have massive, massive, huge basketball-sized cojones to get a, uh, a platinum day date because it's going to look steel, <laughs> you know, you're wearing most of a hundred grand on your wrist, you know, and it's not going to look it. Uh, of course you'll know, and it's heavy. So that's like, you know, having wiener confidence. Anyway, I, I like that watch a lot, but I don't think it's for me, you know? Uh, Hey Mark, why doesn't you, <laughs> Hey, Mark, Gilbert Rios. Hey, Mark, why doesn't join you or Clive on your streams like you do guys on his? Well, you didn't say who, but I think you mean Archie. And that is because he is too lazy and avaricious and greedy. But what do you mean? Why? Do you know him? Because uh, that's work for no money. Uh, and uh, that is not because the because the pontiff doesn't do shit for free. That's why. I think that's what you meant. Um, messenger 570 AD says now is the time to sell Rolex if the sports Rolex drought does not end 
It will damage Rolex, so I am sure they will soon meet supply. Mm. Look, of course, there's some chance that you could be right. I just don't think so. I, I have been saying for a long time that Rolex is going for Patek level exclusivity and higher prices than where they are now uh, based on supply and demand and based on marketing and market manipulation rather than earning it with higher level horology. I mean, like all the, like Patek is like hand built, you know, hand, hand worked by a watchmaker and they're building something like 60,000 watches a year. And Rolex is pumping out almost a million watches a year, completely robotically made. They're brilliant. These Rolex guys. And I don't think they're going to burst their own bubble. I just don't think so. Uh, Hisham has not been grounded by his parents. He's a very busy business executive. He builds hotels and hospitals and apartment complexes. Um, so yeah, oh yeah, it was why doesn't Archie luxury? Because he doesn't do shit for free. Uh, that is why. Oh, Tree Dillinger tells us the platinum day date was 55K. It has to be way over 55K now. Oh my God, way over. Booster, Rolex, Rolex. Rolex, Rolex, Calatrava or Reverso? Hmm. I mean, to a certain extent, you're asking the wrong guy. Uh, but I mean, I'm going to give you an answer. <laughs> I'll give you $2 worth. But I feel like to a certain extent, you're, you're talking to the wrong guy because I'm not sure either one of them is my cup of tea. But between the Calatrava and Reverso, Reverso, for me. Just, that's just for me. Now, the Calatrava, you know, is a dress watch. It's classic. It's gold. It's a Patek. It's uh, Holy Trinity. It's, what, $17,000, right? The Reverso is JLC, which is Patek-level quality at a Rolex price. It's depending on the Reverso. You can get one for six, seven. So it's a lot less expensive than the Calatrava, but... In theory, it's going to be more robust. So if you're a dressy guy, the Calatrava. If you're a, more of a sporty guy, the Reverso. That's just what I think. Mrs. Lai, can I come to your house and do a three-way? Yeah, of course you can. Anytime. <laughs> you, you bet. Bring some high-heeled shoes with you. And uh, she's going to bring donuts for me. That's good. I like... Um, I like donuts. Do I think the possible solution is Clive to host the live stream and I join him there to resolve his connection issues? I don't. I'm happy to do it. Clivey, I know you're watching in a frustrated rage. <laughs> He's probably breaking all his toys right now. I'm sorry about this, Clivey. I really wanted you on. Um, but I don't think so. I think the connection is going to affect anybody even who's hosting. Remember those times when uh, Archie has hosted from Bad Hotel you know, uh, from bad hotel internet, he, he was bad too. So I, I don't think it's, uh, I don't think that's going to fix it, but Clyde text me. If you, if there's something I can do for you, Clyde, you let me know. You just text me. Tree says the reverso has done less than nothing for me. I kind of like that reversible one. They're not all reverse. Are all reversos reversible? I don't know. I don't think so, but I do like the ones with the two watch faces. Uh, Don Haynes, Han Danes. He bought one of those. Um, Tree would rather have a pile of hundred dollar bills than a reverso. I think me too. I'm not, I'm just not, uh, yeah, I don't have a reverso because well, Don Haynes tried to sell me his and it had a good price. Um, and he had a nice one. Uh, and I kind of like the grand date, you know, I, I'm, I do like big, you know, big beefy date wheels. I do like that, but, um, no, I just, uh, I don't know. It's not my, not my cup of tea. I'm more like a dive watch or a really, really robust watch kind of guy. Silla bad boy, do you think Rolex will just stop selling watches and let their sellers just pretend to be working all day? Yes, yes, I think that's exactly what's going to happen. Uh, Yankee Doodle, remember when the pontiff had the tribute to one to 1931? Is it 31 or 39? 31? Anyway, I like it also. I, that is one of the few that I like as well. Uh, thank you, Danger Will, Danger, Danger Will Robinson. Uh, that is the duetto, Two Faces. I do like that one. Um, I think the tribute to 1931, the grand date, and then in the duetto, those are the three that I really like, but, um, you know, I'm sure on some level, the Calatrava is the higher level watch. Um, uh, but also the Calatrava, it has a little, uh, 
it has a little seconds subdial, and uh, I'm not crazy about that. I I I really like a full blown actual full size moving seconds hand, and I mean I know it's ridiculous that I'm showing it to you on a excuse me on a G Shock, but the funny thing is there are a lot of really cool G Shocks that have, you know, uh, hour hand and minute hands, but don't have a second hand. And I hate all of them because I need that second hand. Uh, and I need it big and I need it moving. Um, okay. So this is part of my own weird OCD problem, but, um, anything, anything that makes a big sweeping circular motion, I find ridiculously fascinating. Like, <laughs> you know, oh guys, I'm about to reveal some very deep, dark, you know, crazy Goldberg shit here. But um, I have a, a front end loading washing machine and I, sometimes I have to tear myself away from it, you know, to, because it's spinning and anything that spins, I, I'm like, uh, I'm like an OCD border collie. You know, I can't stop looking. Um, in the summer, <laughs> you know, those hose sprinklers that go, I could stand there for an hour and just like drool, watch one of those, like somebody who's, who's like high as fuck, you know, staring at a candle flame. That's like me with stuff that goes around. So I like me a seconds hand and the Calatrava has a seconds hand sub dial. And so I don't like it. Clyde, the watch wrangler has joined us in the peanut gallery and he says, puck. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. Sorry, Clyde, that you, I'm sorry. I really want you here. Try again if you want. Okay, let me work on the pronunciation here. It feels vaguely Scandinavian to me. Or is it German? Morke Merchensen. Mark, do you miss your Avenger GMT? And um, I would have answered no to that question until about two weeks ago I did. And I started stalking them on um, eBay. And I nearly bought another one. I put a stupid offer in on one you know, to see if I could steal it, but he wouldn't, you know, he was offended by my offer. Uh, so the answer is, I have no, yes, I miss that watch, but I have no business sell, uh, buying another one. I have no business buying another Avenger GMT. No business at all. And the reason is, although I miss it, and although I liked it, I never wore it. And every time I put it on, I thought to myself, you're such a nice watch. Why don't I wear you more? And then I would wear it for half a day, and then it would go back into the safe for weeks, months. You know, and I would just barely ever wear it. So um, something terribly wrong with me. That is not the rancher. That is something else. Okay. Tree says the Yankee Doodle, I like the Cal Travis, but I think they're overpriced. I also like the VC Patrimony. Oh, what about that new Lange and Zon? You know, that new sports watch with the, uh, the day, the date and big, you know, big date, big, big day. Um, I kind of like that. I, I, it has a sub dial for the seconds, but I like it anyway, except for it's $28,000. I think it's stupid. Thoughts on the OP 39 grape. Nope. Just nope. I mean, I like the OP mind you, but grape, come on. What are you, what are you, what are you Simon Kramer, Simon Crane over here with the grape date, just no grape. If you buy grape, you'll never get rid of it. And then you'll, and you'll get tired of it and then you'll be stuck with it. Or you'll take a loss. And it's a shame. It's a Rolex. Gabriel says, Rolex is not hand-built. Completely automated production. I thought some assembly was by hand. Look, at some point, I'm sure a human hand touches them. But I don't think for long. And I don't think to do much. I think they're super highly automated. And that's not a bad thing. Rolex has probably invested a trillion dollars in robotics. They must have invested like a trillion dollars in robotics and they are producing very high quality watches that human hands probably touch for 10 seconds here and there. So it's um, very, very, and, and look at the accuracy of them. It's ridiculous. The superlative chronometers are now plus or minus two, I think, isn't it? They're stupid accurate, crazy. So um, I think they're doing a very fine job, but it, you know, if you want something that's hand built, you don't want a Rolex. Scylla boy, baby boy, says the Lange and Zun sports is an ugly thing. Yeah, that is the prevailing opinion. Most people don't like it. Um, I'm, I think I'm a weirdo. I do like it. Um, but I hate the price. I think it's about double what it should be. 
Uh, Tree says that Rolex is all about the manufacturing more than the watchmaking, and I agree with that. Um, they're also really about the marketing. Mind you, they make a wonderful product. I mean, it's really, really a fine product. If you hold one in your hands, especially the modern stuff, you hold the old ones in your hand. You know, I was watching an Austin Daniels, um, an Austin Daniels uh, uh, video where he was reviewing the Q Timex. And what he said was, if you like vintage Rolex, you'll probably like the Q Timex. But if you don't like vintage Rolex, like the pre-ceramic stuff, then you're not going to like it. And I, as soon as he said that, I was like, yes, exactly. He, you're exactly right. Um, I see Clyde is in the office. I'm going to let him in in a second. But I want to finish this point. Um, the, the Q Timex reminds me a lot of the pre-ceramic uh, sub and the GMT, excuse me. But the new stuff, it's robust. It's beefy. It's well put together. <laughs> Clyde's making faces at me. Clydesy, you look a little better now. Can you hear me now? I can. What have you done? Well, oh, wait. You can you can hear me? Yes, it's all better. Well, guys, it's time for me to shoot off. Fuck! <laughs> fuck! 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 God damn it! I'd like to thank Clyde, the watch wrangler. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, Clyde. We could we could stay on a little bit longer. Oh, and of course, no, and of course, the Rolex fanboys are coming out named Pluto Watch Smugglers, saying we need to discuss the Shitling disaster. Okay. Well, let's discuss that. Uh, Look, I would like you to address that. Keep the punters busy. I need to let a dog pee, so I'm glad you're here. I will be right back. Clyde, you've got the you've got the helm for a moment. Uh, okay, and Foreman Colossus is saying Clyde has gone from being genuinely funny to recently playing farm animal noises and grabbing his new mic to say Rolex, Rolex. Has Clive unknowingly become a hack prop comic comic? Okay, to be honest, Foreman. Now, I just, I don't know if the hell else I can do on the RC stream because, on the Beg stream, because, you know, oh, yeah, that's a good hair day. Oh, okay. By the way, in case you're wondering what I was doing, I had to go in and delete network preferences on that and add it back. And that added, that was some sort of a problem with, um, that took care of the problem with, um, uh, Network settings, upgrading from High Sierra to Mojave. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So, yeah. So now I can live stream, I guess. Yay, but don't tell Archie. Okay. Now, and keep in mind, um, as, as for the as for the Breitling, it's going to break my heart. I know it's going to break my heart, but I'm just too much in lust with it right now, frankly. By the way, is, is, these still, is this uh, common thing still on or not? I'm going to try to... I'm also have to do the same thing with the other... I'm going to have to also do the same thing with the other... Uh, I'm gonna have to do the same thing with the other ones as well, as well. Are you in 4K? I don't know. Am I? I've got a good camera. Okay. Now, by the way, let's let's also try this again. Try what again? Look how good you look now. Now you look perfect. What did you do? You made everything better. See why 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 would anybody call that a shitling? That's a very nice watch. I think they're just trying to get under your skin, Clydesy. Well, okay. Oh, my God. Give me the full screen on this fucker, Mark. All right, hold on. How do I do that? I don't know how to do that. Hold on. I'm going to try it. Oh. Wait. Share a screen now. Hold on. That's not what I wanted. Nope. That's the wrong way around. Wow. Where'd you go, Clyde? Are you I'm there? Still I'm All still right, hold here. On, hold on. Hold on. Let me see if I can make uh, Now you fit me. Okay. Now you fit me backstage. <laughs> okay. Now I'm front stage, but still. I don't, I don't know how to. How do I make you? Ah, uh, screw it, screw it. Never mind. I'm just happy I'm on the fucking live stream now. I know. Huh? I know. <laughs> oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> well, I have lots of options for you, but <laughs> Mark. No, okay. So I'm gonna have to remember how to do that. Yeah. So, how, so I look pretty good now. Decent hour. No, no. Better? Now you look. Yeah, you look better. Your internet connection is right. Your mouth and your your voice are moving at the same oh, rate oh, as oh, me. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> 
your hand just froze for a second. It scared me for a minute. But... So uh, I don't know. Like you know, have you uh, have you defended your shitling? Well, in a, okay. Well, it, it's probably going to break my heart in the end. But why? Why do you think that? What do you think will happen? What's the worst case scenario here? Because because shitling, frankly, and I love this watch. I really love this watch. But Scheitling is like um, it's like it's like Omega. They've got to be cunty. They can't help themselves. So you think they're going to like release like thousands of those that look exactly like that one in like seventeen different like little tiny changed editions? Something along those lines, yeah. Mm. Well, I, you know, I I don't see everybody well, wandering now, around now in an avatar. The Pluto Watch Smuggler. Now he's he's also the arch ultimate Archie for, troll or contrarian. Um, he is he is when it, when it, when it comes to like when it comes to Paul pu pulling something on the big stream, he he is the first one to fist and he plunges it deeper and harder. <laughs> and he's also wearing a deep sea. Well then, uh, th then then we like him, right? Yeah, we do. <laughs> the the, but the trouble is, yeah, Blue to Watch Smuggler saying three thousand dollar loss. Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, yeah. I, 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 yeah, that would be an extraordinarily large loss on that watch. And uh, the only way it happens is if they pump and dump, you know, thousands and thousands of them. But that watch was released as a limited edition of 1,959 pieces worldwide. So now, not even two. Former Colossus is saying Clive is a nightling. It's a non shot shite brightly. That's what, I, that's what I think. Yeah. I agree. Um, and I listen, Breitling has been going through some stuff. One of the big problems that they had prior to their sale was the constant discounting. Um, and that, so that drove down values. And then um, right after they were bought by the new investment group, that investment group came in and dumped crap loads of old inventory into the gray market. So things got a lot worse before they were going to get better because Breitling becomes, you know, owned by a new group, number one. And at the same time, thousands of watches hit the gray market. If you don't believe me, just go look at Joma shop. They are still trying to get rid of the, uh, the Breitling world time, the galactic unit time. They, they bought, I don't even know how many they've been selling them for two years now for $3,500. And it's a $9,000 watch, almost 10,000. So what has to happen is the market has to have time to absorb all that shite, you know, before yeah. they can, before they can bring out any more ling. I'm going to put this one and leave that one up there. Thank you, Matthew. Send me your phone number. I thought I <laughs> thought you would see that one pretty darn quick. I'm yeah. just so, I'm just so fucking happy people can see me now. I'm glad you're here too. <laughs> you know, I did think it was funny because I said I don't know what I don't know how much you could hear, but I did tell the punters that it's been like weeks of you daily nagging me to hold a live stream. Can we do it today? Can we do it today? Can we do it today? And then I finally do it, and I said I've had to boot him off like five times. I said there's no doubt that the rancher is in his apartment right now breaking all his toys with frustration <laughs> you know just like throwing things around no i was like okay so was there no simian rage <laughs> no there was there was dogged determination it's like okay i'm like okay da, 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 try this one nope try this one nope try this one hey mom can, can you fuck I do, uh, you know, Yankee Doodle wants to know, will you keep on having your $8,000? I mean, Clyde did get a little bit of a discount on that watch. And uh, not, yeah. every, not every boutique is even discounting it. No, no. And here's, but, and, and the thing is, look, Breitling, Breitling is county because they're A, Swiss, B, owned by Chinese, which is, takes the county. Breitling is open by Chinese? I thought it was open by... Oh, owned by, by Chinese. Yeah, I think I think, I it think owned by, it's an investment yeah. group. I don't think it's Chinese. Uh, I think so. Well, look it up. I don't think so. I didn't think so. I mean, you know, that's not a bad thing either way, but uh, I can't be a very bad thing anyway. Mm. 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 Uh, you, know course, what? George... you know what? You know what the good thing about G Shock is, Clyde. You spend three hundred bucks on it when you sell it, you're going to get two fifty. <laughs> you know, you can rent a, you can rent a G Shock yeah. for a couple of years for fifty bucks. That's not a bad thing about G-Shock. And and like I said, some of these, like the Nevitimer 8, it's like, eh, it's not really a Nevitimer. Uh -huh. It's just like, it's like Omega. It's like Omega, like, pitting Seamaster on other watches. 
I'm going to try and I'm going to learn to be happy with the, with the $300 watch. That's my new thing. My new thing, guys, is the $300 watch, and I'm going to leave $100,000 worth of watches in the bank vault. And then one day, I will keep having my $100,000. But in the meantime, I'm aware. I'm aware of G-Shocks and shitters, and I'll pull out the Yacht Master when I want to look good, and then when the um, when the Hulk comes out, I mean, sooner or later, they're going to sell me a Hulk. And when that happens, I'll probably wear it. But then I'll put it away and yeah. keep it safe and just hold it. And the Hulk it and love it. What do you think's had the Hulk is going? The Hulk has gone down a little bit in price. It seems to be inching up again a little bit. Right. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, but you know it's uh, certainly hasn't gone back to where it was three years ago when you could buy them under MSRP three little years oh, ago. Here, here's actually something that's interesting. Okay, yeah. so as opposed case, to the rest of this live stream. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, that's all your. So By the way, considering I've been a con- in a convertible for a couple hours just before I got in here, I think yeah. the hair doesn't look that bad. No, you look yeah. you look good. You look slightly tousled, but uh, you know you look. Uh, boyishly handsome tonight speaking of boy speaking of boyishly handsome what did what did you uh what did you boil up for dinner tonight filet mignon and you boiled it right no i sous vide it eh, same thing what's the difference uh, because it's under boiling temperature number okay. one number two it's sealed so uh, it's sealed so what's the temperature of the water under boiling yeah, I know that, but 212 is boiling. Where do you think your sous vide water is at? 129 degrees. You set it for exact temperatures. Wait, what did you set it for? 129 degrees. You cook meat at 120. It doesn't have to like sit there like all day. Like for an hour and a half. Eh? So basically, like I my bath is 129. You basically drop your meat in a hot tub in a baggie in a hot tub, like basically like a hotel hot tub. <laughs> well, come back in an hour and a half <laughs> well and then you sear it afterwards to get the you sear it afterwards but keep in mind i always like that's for like um if you like it on the side well, all right hold so, on there's a couple here on. i you know i'm back i've got my brightly so you fuckers you fuckers <laughs> are not going to hurt my mellow so yeah. you know, of- you're thinking you're going to me up not going <laughs> to Form of Colossus, sous vide, the vaping of meat. <laughs> Funny. Clemson, uh, Luma98 says, I'm joining Mark and appreciating more value-based watches and dumping the others for philanthropy. I mean, uh, yeah, so you're going to like give away all your Vacheron and Constantin. Um, I, I don't know if it's like I, a va- I don't. It's not about value. It's just about enjoying, you know. It's enjoying what you love. Yeah, just and being and being okay with that. Uh, does the Hulk need to be brand new? Is my I think it's blurry again. Oh God, Clyde! Now what? No, I'm thinking of scrub cells. Horribly for the best, but why is Clyde's video all blurry? Am I blurry again? Yeah, a little bit. You just all of a sudden went bad. You went wonky, Clyde. The wonky. It went a little wonky. Jaime Y. Jaime Igriega. Mark, does the Hulk need to be brand new? I think yesterday Rich Buddy might send sell his. Yeah, it needs to be brand new because they are far cheaper. Like a lot of the really difficult to obtain Rolex steel sports these days, they are way cheaper new at the authorized dealer than they are on the secondary market where they sell for a premium. So it's hard to get an AD to sell you one, but I do have a good AD relationship and um so I'm 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 somewhere in the mix to get a Hulk at retail, which is is a good thing. Well, <laughs> okay. Now keep and everyone's like, "What country?" I'm 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 uh, broadcasting from the flyover states, and uh, yeah, I also did some sort. I updated my Mac Pro from High Sierra to Mojave, and I think it's this might be some sort of problem with that. I've got like a, I've actually got another SSD with the old operating system, High Sierra. If I have to, I'll just shut this thing down, rip out the SSD, stick the old one in. <laughs> Fuck. Well, well, YVR says you look like an apparition. Am I still blurry? Mm, yeah, you are, but I can hear you. I don't care if you're blurry. I just care if you're. But you see, I'm looking at myself on camera, and I'm looking. You know, like I said, I'm, I'm looking at myself. I see myself just as well. Am I still blurry? 
Yep. But I can hear you. That's the only thing we care about. The only thing we care about is that we can hear you. Bailey Clive. Shiraco Sales joining us from his yacht. Shiraco, where are you these days? Tell us where you're uh, where you're parked. So, um, you know, I, I, I Clyde just bought a new expensive nice watch. You know, wear good health. Speaking of vaping, there you are vaping some dinner. And uh, I, uh, I'm going the opposite route. My my, this is new watch day to day for me. And this was delivered just about an hour and a half ago by Amazon. <laughs> You know, for 280 bucks, by the way, if you want to look this one up, it is the GSTB 200. GSTB as in boy, 200, $280. Normally, I like even my G-Shocks on stainless steel. And look, here's the funny thing. The clasp on the stainless steel G-Shocks is better than uh, what you get on a pre-ceramic Rolex, you know? But... The reason that I opted finally to go for the resin strap is twofold. First, um, I like to sleep in a watch, and these are real heavy. So you know, you, you, I don't, I don't like, I don't, I don't like wearing anything really heavy to bed. And this is much lighter. But also, G-Shock has kind of gotten smart, uh, like Panerai has. And I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. Yeah, you kind of can make it out if you look right here. Um, there's a little slider bar. It's a sliding spring bar so you can pop the um you could just pop the the uh the the, the strap off of a g-shock now really easily and pop on a replacement strap and um you can um you can dress them up with different straps so eventually i'll probably buy different color replacement straps and then you know you can dress up your barbies the way um pan just bought a uh a pam didn't he Clyde Z? yeah he did he got a pam 111 i think I think it's a 111. And then what's that strap that he, he's had that strap. He, the watch is new to him, but I, I think that distressed Japanese canvas strap is. Got that is, from. Uh, oh, air straps. What's that? From air combat straps. Okay. It's really air, cool. Yeah, it is. Air does great work. We're waiting for actually something here for the Breitling. Also, it's not. Uh, Distressed leather, it's finally embossed. And the stitching is going to mask the patina. Well, um, Justin says your webcam is as furry as Archie's toes tonight. Um, no, that is not fur on Archie's toes. That's actually fungus, uh, Justin, just to, you know, just for you to be aware. Uh, Yankee Doodle says, Mark, give us the model number to that Casio G-Shock. Uh, it is it is a GSTB. 200 something hold on well wait i think it says it right on the back of the thing let me look got a, you know it's got a nice little laser engraved case back uh it is carbon core guard whatever that is gstb 200 that's what this is the movement's made in japan it's cased up in china I don't right. know. I, you know, for 280 bucks. The, actually, okay, here's the thing. This watch is last year's. This watch is this year's. And um, they're very similar. They just made some improvements. So, but the funny thing is, this one, um, this one is improved. Last year's is actually more expensive. Go figure. This is like 350. And this is 280. I don't know why. But I love the idea of being able to take off the strap and just change them up. And um, I think I'm going to end up selling this one because I, I got three G-Shocks now. This one, this one, and then that all-metal digital one. And um, I, I think these two are so similar, one to the other, that there's no reason to own them both. So I'll, I'm going to wait and make sure that I, I actually do really like this one. And then if I do... And if I don't miss this, I'll I'll sell this. I just got this one on eBay for two hundred and fifty dollars, not not more than three weeks ago. Um, and then I realized, you know, hmm, I think I want the 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 newer one instead. So I'll probably just turn it back into the wild. Do you ever buy anything, Clyde? And then like a month later, you want to sell it? Yeah. What? Oh, absolutely. What How's my that? audio? Is it still all right or? Oh, who's here? Oh, Scirocco Sales. Let me let him in. Hang on. Where in the world are you today, mate? Same old, same place. 
Yeah, we're, uh, Sydney Harbor, uh, <laughs> Auckland, uh, Queensland. Queensland's about, on fire, isn't it? It's Queensland's on fire. I can hear. It's fucking windy. Yeah, but you're in the you're on the water, so you're not likely to burn. Yeah, I know. I'm on the water. Yeah. I might drown. You know what? You, I I have a little bit of color in me. You are beautifully golden brown, and then we got Clyde. Clyde, then we you got look Clyde. Like, Clyde, you look like a marshmallow right in the middle of like a. Sm <laughs> this is like a s'more that's like backwards. The marshmallow is right in the middle. <laughs> good eye, all. Well, good day to you too. What are you What are you wearing today? I see a lovely metal, metallic looking. Uh, okay, it? I'm gonna I'm this Wi-Fi one more time. So I'll talk to Shiraco. Clyde, right don't leave it. What is, What is it, Shiraco? Is it a Is it a yacht master? That's uh -huh. a, Hey, you got one just like Bear Clooney. <laughs> yeah, I have I I have the same one as you, and I love I love it, and that's the one I wear most lately. I but, I'm swapping between the Saab and, and this, and mm. probably tomorrow I go back to the Saab. Yeah, I could you know the the Saab feels a lot bigger than the than the Yacht Master. You think? Don't you? I mean, no, it's got, I think it's a lot. Do you have a wait? Wait, do you have a a ceramic Saab or a pre ceramic? Yeah, a ceramic. No kidding. To my eye, the super case looks bigger than that. Than that, than that uh, yacht master that you got. I don't know. I, I just this just seems bigger. Hmm. I wear it. Well, that's it what she bigger. said. Yeah. Well, actually, funny enough, you said you said that. She said that. <laughs> Did she? <laughs> she said that last night. <laughs> you know, you are actually the only guy I know who who can lay a legitimate claim to wearing a yacht master on your own yacht. And I got a subby, and I'm a diver. And well, no, I don't think it counts until you get a submarine. Oh yeah! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I hope a boat doesn't turn you know, into something. Like yeah. okay, I've got a I've got a deep sea. I've got a I've got well I've got two deep seas, but I don't have a uh, I've got a deep sea sea dweller and a deep sea. But I've never been to the I've never been to the bottom of the Mariana Trench. No, no, mm -hmm. that's too far. Yeah, hey, I hope. Who, who did that recently? James Cameron. That was yeah. It was did that that well. That's why they call it the James Cameron. I, I that's it. Yeah, I've mm, I've got that watch. Yeah. No, I, I, I think for me that it's just a bit too, too thick. Mm. Oh, it's ridiculous! It's it, it's like yeah. seventeen millimeters thick, and it's very, very tall. It's uncomfortably tall. I, I rarely wear it. Yeah. But you know what? When I want to feel like really, you know, brawny and manly, I put it on just for fun. Yeah, I guess so. You can pump iron at the same time. You know what? It's like it's like strapping a hockey puck to your wrist. You feel yeah. very, you feel very tough. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. I get that. No, I, I um, I don't know. I'm, look, I'm not a watch expert. I, I if I like it, I buy it. I don't give a fuck about selling it. And I'm shit. not a watch expert either. Um, I think you guys seem to know a lot more about me, about 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 that stuff than me. But I tried on a uh, a Seamaster Professional. The new one, like what did it have yeah. the laser? Yeah, the, I, I I had that watch and I flipped it. What what did you think of it? Well, I got I ended up buying the Aquaterra. Hmm. Because I just again, I, I felt the the Seamaster Professional was just too heavy. Yeah, it is a little. It is a little yeah. heavy. Yeah. How did yeah. you feel about that uh, helium release wart? I can't see the point. Yeah, me either. You no, know, I really don't see the point. And and to be honest, yeah, okay, watches were worn underwater a lot mm. a long time ago. Yeah. You know, I do have a good friend who is a. Um, he used to be a uh, North Sea oil rig diver. So he did saturation diving where he needed yeah. a healing. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, he was down for a month at a time. But they don't yeah. wear that. They, you know, they wear dive computers now and they, they wear dive computers. He, right. did, he, he bought himself a sub because it was a tax deduction. That's <laughs> funny. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So when was he doing, when was he down, you know, in the diving bell for a month at a time doing deep sea? Oh, uh, probably a little while ago now. He's retired. He's a yachty. He's yeah. somewhere up in Because when, when he was doing it, it was it was extremely dangerous work. I mean, it is now. Even now, it's very dangerous. But in those days, the, they didn't have as much instrumentation as we do now. And I, I, it, was, it was really, you know, that was work for the very brave. I looked at doing it back in uh, uh, about 80, 81 or 82. Mm. And my wife at the time just said no. Yeah. 
Because the mortality rate was just outrageous. Yeah, no, it's nuts. But it was like I think they they paid combat pay, which is probably why you were looking to do it. Because I think the oh you know, yeah, the money was was there. Whether I had the brain or not to to pass all the courses to, yeah. to get into it is that like know? underwater welding? You know, down there, like you know, thousand feet down, oh, doing you know. Yeah, pretty much. They, they do all yeah, sorts it's crazy. Of things. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's unbelievable what human beings can accomplish when they try it. And it's just amazing to me how brave some people are like, you know, the people in uh, your armed forces, our armed forces who go on deployment to, you know, terrifically dangerous places, serve their yeah, countries. Yeah. And, you yeah. know, it, it's to be admired. I, I, I don't fully understand it, but I, I sure admire people who can do that. Yeah, no, I get that. Um, yeah. But nah, nah, it's not for me. Uh, I like to sit and drink beer at night and that's my adventure stuff. And, Chase loose women when they come around. Well, if they're not loose before you find them, I'm certain they are after. <laughs> Funny, you know, I, I just met an American, the first American woman I've slept with. <laughs> well, you know, but the, you know, listen, first of all, they're all pink when you split them. And secondly, American women are, uh, are probably crazy for an Australian accent. She probably didn't know exactly where you're from, but I'm sure the accent just did all the work for you. It's almost unfair. She's nuts. She's nuts. She came in on a yacht and wow. Good God. <laughs> was she crew or was she, you know, yeah. a princess? Yeah. yeah, she's crew on an American um, vessel. And I don't know, she's got one plan and then the plan the next day changes. And now she wants me to crew on that boat. And I'm going, uh, oh, fuck that. Somehow, you, somehow she wound up on an Australian vessel of sorts. Yeah, it's, you know, I, <laughs> I, I let her have some of my wine. Well, good on, good on you. I'm yeah. sure she looked good on you, mate. I'm sure she looked good on you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's all good so, fun. Clydesy, are you with us? What happened to you, Clydesy? Oh, did I mute him? What? what a, no. I, oh, I can't unmute him because he muted himself. Clydesy, I need you to come back, Clyde. Clyde, come back, Clyde, because we're going to wrap it up shortly. It's been uh, we've been here for well over an hour. Okay. Yeah, I just flicked on and saw you on, and I thought, well, I'll have um, a look. Yeah, no, thank you. I'm glad that you did. Forbin Colossus says, Mark has a remarkable number of tips for betting women. Well, let me tell you something, Forbin Colossus. Nobody knows women better than a gay man because they tell us stuff that they will not tell you. Mm -hmm. And um, I I'll tell you, you got to do one of two things to get women. <laughs> Before I tell you the two things, I would, I would I would just like to make note of Doc BBC, who is in the audience, who says Clive went black. <laughs> and what I'm going to say is, Doc, you did it first. <laughs> Private joke. Doc will know what I mean. Um, so uh, uh, you got to do one of two things. Uh, you got to listen to them. Yep. Or you got to be a complete asshole. <laughs> you know, just be a dick. You know, I do the listen bit. Yeah. Yeah. Because nobody See? listens. Nobody listens to women. No, uh, no, but you listen to them, but you've got to, all you've got to do is very simple. You just put a blank look on your face. <laughs> Make no comment. Uh, yeah, because we like men, men like to talk. We, yeah, we, tend yeah. to, we tend to dominate a conversation. So I said, let, her, let this one particularly, she chats away, and I look at the window, and I'm like, yeah, right. I, yeah, yeah. I look past her. And, have my sunnies on, so you know she knows I'm paying attention. Yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> you're like, hey, baby. And so uh, we have a, we have a comment from Victor here. I'm on a cruise ship and I'm watching live streams. I'm addicted, Victor. I know you went on a cruise down to like Cozumel, right? And um, here's how you know Victor is wealthy. It's uh, it's not because of the watch collection. Any idiot can collect watches. It's because Victor is paying for. Wi-Fi on a cruise ship. <laughs> That's how you know Victor as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because the Wi-Fi packages on cruise ships are stupid expensive. Yeah. Well, here, here's my cruise ship. Hang on. Yeah. Let's see if we can do this. Yeah, you have a nice ship. There we go. The difference is you own yours. Oh, there yeah. you go. You got some beers. That's my view. Take, that give us, give us a little tour. Man. Take us out on deck. You want to go out on deck? Mm, yes, please. Take the thing with me. Yep. Yes, take the thing. Where is it? Right, I got the thing. That's a bit windy. Beautiful. We're looking at the uh, Queensland, a harbor somewhere in Queensland. Just beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. Where's the folks? 
<laughs> have you keel called anybody lately? Lately, man, man, the bilge pumps. Man, the bilge pumps. Yeah, I thought I had to do that yesterday. I'm sure. Well, yeah. hopefully the bilge pumps build them, bilge themselves. Uh, Doc says no orchestra. Well, you do have those big white teeth, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> Poor doc. Victor, hit up Senior Frogs. Is Senior Frogs in Cancun or Cozumel? I've been there. I got really, really massively fucked up at Senior Frogs, but I don't think it's Cozumel. I think it's no, it is Cozumel. It, it it's Cozumel. And uh, okay, here's what happened to me in Cozumel. I went to Senior Frogs. Alcohol is extremely cheap there. Jello shots. They have this thing called whistle shots, where when you down the shot. The girls blow a whistle, bend you over their knee, and like play the bongos on your butt. And um, Senior Frogs is about a 45 minute walk from the pier where the cruise ships dock. And like normal people grab a taxi from the pier and, you know, just run real quick down to Senior Frogs. But we thought we would walk. We just didn't realize how far it was. And it's very hot there. So by the time we arrive at Senior Frogs, we are parched. So we intelligently decide that we're going to hydrate and we decided to do that with tequila and whistle shots. And the margaritas there are like in a goldfish bowl. It's like a giant goldfish bowl of margarita. It's like ridiculous. And uh, we got so polluted, my friends and, and myself, we got so stupid drunk. And at a certain point, we, real, we looked around and realized the bar had fairly well emptied out. And then the next thing you know is what we hear this noise. Ah, ah, ah. And we realized it's the ship's whistle. Oh, look, my German shepherd came. In. Like, what the hell? Is, she's like, what is that? What's, what's happening? <laughs> uh, anyway, the ship is, is, you know, is blowing its whistle, which it only does when it's like 15 minutes from departure. And we're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> you know, the ship is going to leave and we're going to be stuck completely drunk in Cozumel at Senior Frogs of all places. So we throw money on the oh, table. Boy. We run outside because there had been cabs, you know, a lot of taxis. But the taxis were all gone because every sane person had already gone back to the ship. So there were no taxis. All there was was a, a, a horse and, and buggy. It wasn't even a proper buggy. It was like a, a horse and a cart. And the horse had like a, a big, you know, harness collar around her neck that was all decorated with flowers. And and I started talk. I speak pretty good Spanish, so I started talking to the guy. And um, it it turned out that he was just uh, oh, I'm here all alone. It turned out that he was, um, you know, just letting tourists take pictures with him and the horse. The horse's name was Margarita. And we said, how much to get us back to the boat, and how fast can you get us there? And he went mm, thirty dollars, senor, which was like outrageous. It was like crazy very high money we could have taken a cab for like four but there were none so i was like yes that's fine thirty dollars no problem let's go margarita <laughs> so i'm like i'm like dude and i'm this is all in spanish i'm like dude you better you better whip margarita into a frenzy you, you know and we were almost falling off and uh it was just like a miracle that we made the ship and we made it like they're waving at us when they saw <laughs> margarita with this cart full of drunken yankees you know hanging off the back almost falling flower petals flying through the air oh my god what good times that was i have very, very fond memories of Senior Frogs. I think that you should go there and, uh, Victor, enjoy a whistle shot. Ladies and gentlemen, I have been with you for one hour, 23 minutes. There are 87 of you still with me. I would like to thank you so much for having joined me. I've got Rolex fatigue, and lately I am enjoying G-Shocks. I don't know what's happening to me, but the journey continues, and I appreciate your coming on this adventure with me. I promise I'm not quitting YouTube. I'm just exhausted from having written a book in the last couple few months. Um, I've got to go uh, on another trip, um, leaving tomorrow for a few days. Maybe I'll shoot a review while I'm up there of, of this guy here and post it up. I'll, I'll do my best, but I promise I will be back. I appreciate all of you who have subscribed, who have liked, who have super chatted, who have donated. But most of all, I appreciate you just spending your time with me because that you are never going to get back in either of mine. and I'm glad that we've spent a little bit of it together. Guys, I'm going to look for the button. <laughs> look all shifty-eyed. Thanks again.